is a very, very highly symbolic new moon. It's giving us a preview, a sneak peek as to what's to come for the rest of this year. And then also what's to come next year in our lives. All right, I'm gonna need you to listen the mother up up. We have a solar eclipse, which means we are entering into eclipse season. And this is a very intense eclipse season because this whole eclipse season is ruled by Mars. And so our lives are about to change in drastic ways. This is going to be a different kind of eclipse than the last eclipses we've been experiencing for the last year and a half. And so you don't want to miss this. You want to listen up. Make sure you watch the first part of this video. As always, I will be checking on you and let's go. Welcome. Hello. My name is Tani. Welcome back to the channel. I do a lot of astrology and shit over here right now, basically just astrology, but I do a lot of shit over here. So if you like this video, if you'd like to subscribe, if you'd like to hang out with me, can be like internet besties. So in today's video, we are talking about the mother effing Aries solar eclipse happening on April 19th. 2023. This Aries solar eclipse is really, really coming in bold, hot, fiery, and pushing us and pressuring us into some really intense changes in our lives. So I want you to listen up to this because I'm about to preach to you because the solar eclipse is not okay, not like the other new and full moon videos, not like the other fucking eclipses. Like this solar eclipse is intense okay and so that is like the first word i want you to keep in mind over these next couple of weeks it starts to feel a little intense it is because it is intense okay like things are fired the fuck up for this eclipse coming in and there's a reason for that there's tons of reasons for that that we're going to dissect and go over in tonight's video so if you get anything out of this video i would really really appreciate it if you could like this video if you could comment down below let me know it really really mean a lot to me you guys have been super supportive on my videos lately and i am really really grateful i'm really really thankful and if you would like to support me farther if you would like to get more content from me make sure to check out my patreon down below make sure you follow me on my socials because i also post a lot more on my other socials. I dive into spirituality, healing, which I'm sure a lot of you guys are into if you're watching astrology videos, okay? Go your own way, go your own way. All right, I am all up in the Aries vibes today, if you cannot tell, okay? So let's go ahead and get into this mother effing solar eclipse in Aries, okay? So what the fuck is going on here, okay? Like, what is this, right? This is a solar eclipse, which means it is a new moon that is amplified, okay? Like, amplified. This is not your typical new moon. This is the start of major, major change. The ancients used to look at eclipses as a massive, massive symbol for change to come, and that is exactly what this eclipse is in so many different mother effing ways that we will go over, so just bear with for a sec. This eclipse, at 29 degrees of Aries is a solar eclipse, a new moon eclipse. So it is very, very much about new beginnings, new big time changes, right? Now, the reason I say that this is even more of a symbolic solar eclipse is that this is that 29 Aries, right? The nodes are in Taurus and Scorpio. And so if you don't know what that means, the nodes are where eclipses happen right? But this eclipse is happening in Aries. And the reason for that is because the North Node is so close to moving into Aries. It's literally at the very beginning degrees of Taurus. It's around four degrees of Taurus. And the solar eclipse in Aries is happening at 29. So it's only a few degrees apart. So this is still considered a solar eclipse, even though the node is in a different sign. It is at 29 degrees Aries. So let's, let's fucking start there, okay? 29 degrees Aries. The 29th degree of any sign is the aneuretic degree. It is a very intense degree because it is the very end of that sign. It's the very last degree of that sign. It's like we've learned the fucking lessons. We just want to move on, right? It is a very intense time. It's like all this pent up energy from the sign itself is all meeting at that 29th fucking degree, right? And so the way that I explain this is I went on vacation recently, right? As I was almost there, I started really getting antsy. Like the last hour was so horrific. It was insane. I mean, 
been in the car all freaking day. You're used to being in the car. You're used to that environment by now, right? But at this point, it's like, you know, you're so fucking close, but you're not quite fucking there, right? And so there's this intensity building that's like, I need to get out of this car. We need to just fucking get there, right? Like, I need to just fucking get there, right? But you're not there, right? And time is going by so slowly. And so you try to take your mind off of it. And then you look again, and it's only been two fucking minutes. And you're like, oh my god. And it's like, that is the aneuretic degree, the 29th degree of every sign. It's like, we've already learned all these lessons to do with this sign. We've been in this sign for however long, right? And now we are ready to move on, right? It, it, it's literally like the moment before you have an orgasm, right? Like it, it's literally that kind of energy. You are ready to move the fuck on, but you're not quite there, right? It's always just kind of like not quite there, right? So that is the energy of this solar eclipse, this brand new massive beginning, massive shift, massive change coming in for us in Aries that is so close to the North Node. Like we're not going to have that solar eclipse in Taurus this time because this is just all kind of lining up as it's at the very end of Aries. Now we already had an Aries new moon, which I did a video on. Go back and watch that. If you have not watched the Aries new moon video, you want to go do that so you can kind of catch up and see where we're at and why I'm saying a lot of the things that I'm about to say. This solar eclipse, it's a, a very intense new beginning that is going to symbolize to us what is to come for the rest of this year and even next year. And the reason that I'm saying that is because the nodes are about to move into Aries and Libra, right? Libra is Aries opposite sign. When the North Node moves into Aries, we are going to continue to have eclipses in Aries. So this is just the first one. So it's giving us a preview, a sneak peek as to what's to come for the rest of this year, once the node moves into Aries, but it's going to kind of start now, like it's starting now, even though the node is not in there. So just keep that in mind. And then also what's to come next year in our lives. And so this is a very, very highly symbolic new moon. Like this is literally showing us what's coming. Okay, so the next thing, what the fuck does this mean? What's the energy that this is bringing in? What are the traits, the themes, etc.? that this solar eclipse is about to wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, <laughs> bring in into our lives. What shifts is this about to bring in? What does this have to do with, right? So this has to do with Aries. By the 29th degree, this is a more mature, ready to fucking go kind of Aries energy, right? This is not the Aries new moon energy that I was talking about in my new moon video, although some of that will still be present, but a lot of that was baby Aries energy, right? This is a different kind of Aries energy that this is bringing in. This is an energy of like, okay, I'm getting clear on who the fuck I am and what the fuck I need to do in my life for me and in my, in terms of my individuality. This is a start of seeing who we really are, what we need to embrace in terms of who we really are, our desires, and also making big, powerful like atomic changes in our lives that really, really set the stage for powerful, powerful new beginnings. This is a very empowering and powerful, radical new moon. And I'm gonna go more into why that is in a second, but this is about the self. This is about individuality because Aries is about all those things. This is ruled by Mars, okay? So this is more about what do I need? What do I want? What are my desires? It is a very self-focused energy very individual energy, right? This is about taking the lead somewhere in our lives and, you know, no longer just waiting uh, or being on the fence or being indecisive or thinking other people need to change or other things need to change for us to change, right? This is about being the fucking change in our lives right now, right? No longer worrying about how is this going to happen? When is this going to happen? What the fuck ever? This is about being the fucking change, stepping into your leadership, stepping into your empowerment, stepping into your power. If not, this solar eclipse is going to feel very fucking intense, if not for you. It's going to show you where you are not embracing your power, where you feel like kind of crippled by your own sense of victimhood or giving your power away. And again, I'm going to go more into why that is in a second. This is about taking your power back. And that starts with taking accountability for where you're at in your life right now and why you are or are not acting on certain things. This is also about finding your own fucking way, going your own fucking way, 
No longer waiting for someone else to come save the day or for someone else to come help you out or for someone else to get their shit together so you can get your shit together or for something else to happen outside of you. Like, no, this is about being in your own power, being the pioneer that goes and just says, this is what we're doing, or this is what I'm doing, or this is where I'm going to explore. Even though no one else has yet, like I'm going to go here, right? This is about being the pioneer. So this time can feel like there's a lot of newness, right? There's a lot of newness, but because there's so much newness, it's like, we don't know where to go because it's new. We've never been here. So it feels like, oh, I need someone to guide me or I need answers or I need, you know, something to help me go here. But it's like, no, Aries is the pioneer. This is about finding your own fucking way. This is about becoming the fucking leader in whatever you're dealing with right now, right? Now, another thing this could bring up is the wounded masculine and masculine energy in general, right? How, what is our relationship to masculinity? Are we hustling and, you know, throwing it down too much and taking all this action, but not getting results? Are we too in a flow and just kind of all over the place and depending on others to figure it out to where we're not on our masculine energy? Like, what is our relationship to masculinity? And that's going to really fucking come up at this time. How do you feel about the masculine? What have the masculine figures in your life really shown you and done for you or taught you? Another thing that this could bring up because Mars is in Cancer at the time of this solar eclipse and we always want to look to the the ruler of this solar eclipse, right? And that's Mars. <laughs> Mars is going to rule the next the next lunar eclipse that we have too, which is in Scorpio. So we have two we have a very Mars eclipse season and this is why this is going to be a very intense potentially challenging, but also life-changing eclipse season. This is going to like catapult us forward in new directions very fucking quickly. <laughs> okay. So it could bring up the sense of the wounded masculine, right? But it could also bring up this sense of the mother beast energy, right? Like Mars and Cancer. I think of like the woman that kid is in the car that's burning you know what i mean and she just all of a sudden gets this adrenaline and lifts up the fucking car it's like superhuman out of nowhere that's like mars and cancer doing extreme things to protect what you love to protect what you care about to protect what you're loyal to to protect your your heart space right it can be a time where we feel like our backs are against the wall and we are ready to start moving or protecting or taking action on something that maybe previously felt difficult or felt impossible. This is a time to get back into our point of view, what we desire, what we want, no longer looking at what everybody else wants, people pleasing and all of that shit. Fuck all that shit. This is a time to look at our own perspectives, to look at what we desire, what we want, what we want to do, our own opinions instead of everybody else's. So now we're going to get into the reasons that I'm kind of saying all this. I'm looking at my, my chart over here just so you know. So the reason that I'm saying all of this shit is because right around this solar eclipse energy, we're going to have this solar eclipse squaring the planet of Pluto in Aquarius not by sign, but by degree. It's literally on a building square and it's only one degree off. So this is a very intense energy and in square that's coming into this solar eclipse, which means that this is a solar eclipse that is pushing us in a direction and pot potentially going to cause deep issues of power, control, secrecy, you know, deep rooted things to come up in terms of another area of our lives. It's going to call us into stepping into our power, which is somewhat of what I was saying before. It's going to call us into stepping into a sense of empowerment. It's going to call us into making big, big changes, intense changes, a new beginning that feels very, very intense to some level. That's gonna require us to, you know, maybe let something else die or shed something else or an alchemical process in some way, a transformation in some way for us to finally move forward because of what we desire or what we want or what's best for us as an individual. Now, the other big thing that's happening during this solar eclipse is that Mars, the ruling planet of this solar eclipse is going to be squaring Chiron in Aries, right? So the ruler of Aries, Mars, which is in Cancer, again, this very protective, going out of our way to 
protect and really feel intensely and passionate about the things that we care for, the things that feel nostalgic to us, our family or our things that are personal to us. It's going to be squaring Chiron and Aries. And so this is going to be at a time of intense healing. And again, like I said, wounded masculinity, but also potentially wounded femininity with Mars being in Cancer, right? And so this is going to show us where we have insecurities about our individuality, about taking action, about asserting ourselves, about going after what we want, about, you know, actually initiating certain things. It's going to show us where there are certain wounds, okay, especially in terms of family and anybody that you have really close personal bonds with in your life. That's going to be a really big theme for a lot of people with this solar eclipse. So it's going to show us you know, where there are certain challenges or issues that we have in terms of things that are close to our heart, but where we have certain insecurities about, am I not good enough? Can I really do this? You know, it, it, am I really able to like initiate this and go after this or stand up for this or whatever the case may be, right? And so that is why I'm saying a lot of the things that I've been saying. This is a very empowering, intense uh, energy that is pushing us to make a severe change. And so one of the ways that I've really been describing this energy that I've been describing it over on my Patreon is a fuck it kind of change. A change that you get to. You know, have you ever had one of those big moments in your life where you get so fed up, you get so frustrated, you get so over it, right? Like you're so over something, like you're at your breaking point with something that you finally, finally decide this is it, I'm fucking done. And that is what the catalyst is that changes everything. That's what causes this new beginning to happen. That is kind of what I see for this new moon. It's this kind of fuck it energy. It's this kind of, it's this very strong masculine energy coming in that's been wounded, that's been disempowered, that's had to deal with, you know, so much shit and it's at the end of its rope and it's like, fuck it. Like this new beginning is happening because I'm forcing it to happen. I'm deciding that it's happening. This is a powerful new beginning that's happening because I intend for it to, right? It may not be perfect. It may not be peaceful, right? It may cause confrontation. It may cause conflict. It may cause disagreements or whatever the fuck, but I am so fucking fed up with the way that I've been doing things or with this situation or with this area of my life or with this part of my life that I am just fucking going for it, right? It's like we get this drive, this initiation, this fire that pushes us through that brink, like through the other side that's really coming up for this solar eclipse. So that's kind of how I feel about it. I feel like it's this moment where we're fed up, we're done taking shit. It's like, yes, we see where we've held ourselves back. We see where, you know, other people have held us back. We see where personal matters have been holding us back. We see where we've been feeling not enough or not good enough or like we can't take action on certain things or like, you know, whatever, right? Certain fears that we have, right? But this solar eclipse is a new beginning and this may not all happen right on the 19th, right? This is a solar eclipse. So this is going to ripple for the next six months. I forgot to say that in the beginning, but this is a six month cycle here. And so these are themes that you could notice through your life for the next six months, but this is pushing us towards a place of individuality while still protecting what we care about or to protect what we love and care about what's close to our hearts while also facing certain fears and being you know overcoming certain power struggles and so hello present day me here so i wanted to add quite a few things that i don't really feel i all the way touched on and some things that have come to me since filming this video originally so bear with because i have so much more for you so just hang out with me for another second so one of the other things i really really wanted to emphasize with this eclipse is how freaking faded this eclipse is being at the 29th degree the anuretic degree of fate number one eclipses being affiliated with faded symbolic change really big life changes and a lot of like really karmic and faded energy that comes in number two but also also just the sense of this is showing us a new direction that is going to be coming in very, very soon once the North Node moves into Aries in July. And so this is such, such, such a faded ass eclipse on so many 
different levels. There's so many different layers of fate that are connected to this eclipse. So what I really, really feel with this, interpreting this as an astrologer, is that this eclipse, yes, obviously very, very fucking faded, like I just said, but it's also a massive turning point. Like for some people, this could be where like fate grabs the fucking wheel and literally pivots you or pushes you in a whole new direction. For other people, this could feel like somewhat of an ending just because of it being at that 29th degree and it being at the very end of Aries, like this, you know, degree that is, you know, right at this like pivotal shift, you know, this, this pivotal marker of like endings and beginnings. And so, yeah, for other people, this could be a shift in a whole new direction. And with the squares that are happening at the time of this eclipse, you know, this definitely is showing me that there is going to be some challenge, some tension. And something else I wanted to add is that Mars and Cancer is really bringing in this theme of potentially abandonment issues or fears of betrayal. And that was another thing I also really wanted to add about, you know, the Pluto square with this eclipse as well, is it's kind of showing us certain fears we have with making big change and moving on and so those are some other things that I really feel could come up this could be a time of really connecting with our heart space which I know that I've mentioned but I wanted to emphasize that even more here because you know Mars and Cancer squaring Chiron and Aries is definitely a time where we are seeing certain insecurities that we have individually in terms of our heart and following our heart and moving with our hearts and challenges that come with that at times as well. So this is very explosive, faded, atomic change that's coming in and maybe some fears or issues, insecurities, past wounds, past versions of us that are holding us back from making this big switch. So this may not be the actual switch for some people. That may come later in the year, but it could be for other people where you start seeing this new way, but it's challenging. There's a lot of fear involved. Uh, or you get pushed in this new direction and have to really pivot everything because there's this whole new direction you're being kind of pushed into and now you have to kind of face certain fears or conflicts or fallout because of that. But yeah, so it's going to be a little different for everybody. It's just a very turbulent and faded time that's coming in with this. And another thing that tells me that this could definitely be a massive pivotal shift for many people that comes in that shows us a new direction or that pushes us in a new direction is the fact that right after this, a few days after this, Mercury is going retrograde. And so in Taurus, actually, where the North Node is, you know, which I'm going to talk about in just a second. So the fact that Mercury is going to go retrograde in Taurus really shows me there's going to be this massive reflection period on how we've been taking action and how we've been going about wherever Taurus is in our lives. And these nodal lessons, these very karmic and faded lessons that we've been learning in Taurus for the last almost year and a half now. And so that also tells me there's going to be a retreating, a rethinking, a redoing, a reflecting in this period shortly after this eclipse. And so it definitely looks like this eclipse is some kind of pivot. Something gets revealed or brought up or some kind of new shift starts coming in, some kind of new path, new energy, new direction is being shown to us around this eclipse. And then shortly after, it causes us to start kind of going back and retreating and reflecting and rethinking things in a certain area of our lives. And so that is another thing I wanted to bring up that I didn't get to in the original video. But another thing I really also wanted to bring up is is the North Node in Taurus, since this is a North Node eclipse. Even though the eclipse itself is happening in Aries, the North Node is still in Taurus. And so we're definitely still going to have this sense of that North Node in Taurus energy with this because it is near the North Node and that is what is making it an eclipse. So whatever is coming in, whatever this change is or this new direction or this new amplified explosive energy that is coming in or this new individual self-focused energy that's coming in with this eclipse is also going to play out with this North Node in Taurus wherever you have that in your chart. So it is also potentially going to relate to some of the lessons we've been learning with the North Node in Taurus for the last like almost year and a half now since like I think February of 2022 is when the nodes switched. I could be wrong about that, a little off about that, but it was somewhere around that time. So if 
you, you know, know where the North Node in Taurus is in your chart, then you know that area of life that you've been having to learn lessons in. And this eclipse could somehow add to that in some way or show you a shift that needs to happen for you to fully embrace those Taurus lessons. And so, yeah, that, those are some other things I wanted to really say that I don't feel I emphasized in this video and some things I wanted to add uh, since filming this video because I did film this like a week before. So I was still, I was getting a lot of downloads about it and that was just when I could film it. And so I've gotten more things since then. But yeah, I feel like this is a major turning point, a major faded turning point that is coming in here that can bring up a lot of life changes and show us some power struggles that we need to face, some fears we need to face, some old past insecurities and shit that we need to face. And yeah. That is what I see here for this solar eclipse in the sign of Aries, generally speaking. Let me know down below if you made it this far. Make sure to comment badass down below. I'd love to hear what you have to say about everything I just said. Is it relating? Do you feel like you know, this energy at all. And now we're going to get into what this means for your rising sign. Alrighty, Aries, starting with you, because the star of the show is you right now with all of this activity happening in your sign. This is a major, major, major shift for you. You may not realize it right away, but this is going to be something that begins building for the next six months after this solar eclipse and even longer than that you know because then the nodes are going to move into your sign in july and you're really going to you know it's going to really kind of kick this off for you and so this is a massive massive karmic faded whatever you want to call it shift a universal shift in who you are your identity yourself how you incorporate your masculinity within yourself and who you are and what you do, how you take action, how you initiate, how you assert yourself in the world. And this is also going to bring in a sense of your self-concept, right? How you see yourself, how you express yourself, what you want to do in terms of your life. This is very self-focused and really going to be an intense time that causes you to really get a glimpse of what's to come and to also really step up to the plate, step into your leadership, step into your, you know, kind of more self-focused, identity-focused area of your life, your body, your health, your vitality, but also with Mars being in Cancer and your fourth house, you know, the ruler of this eclipse and your chart ruler as an Aries rising, there's going to also be intense changes and a focus on your home life, your personal life, your past, your kind of private life is going to really come in to focus at this time. And I'm sure it already has, but definitely with this solar eclipse happening, you know, it's kind of like what in the past or what's going on privately or what's going on behind the scenes that's really bringing up certain wounds or certain insecurities or certain, you know, uh, old shit for you that really needs to be worked through and healed that has really affected how you feel about yourself your identity, how you move in terms of what you want to do in life, how you initiate, how you take action, how you assert yourself, how you feel about yourself. You know, all of that's going to really kind of come to the surface here for you to like work through. This is going to be kind of like a new beginning, but a new beginning that's like ending some kind of really intense cycle, right? That's bringing you into maturity or that's bringing you into a sense of like more of who you are while also letting go of parts of you that no longer align or versions of you from the past that no longer align. Now, another thing is, like I said, the solar eclipse is going to be in a building square, pretty intense, tight building square with Pluto in your 11th house of friends, networking, your social life, society, trends, things like this, groups of people. So this could be also kind of an intense challenge or change that's coming in that's kind of really making you feel like it's time to kind of, you know, really transform or change, you know, the people that you have in your life or how you're going about networking with people or certain groups of people that you have in your life, you know, or certain uh, trends that you follow or certain types of uh, groups that you may follow or belong to in some way. And so that could also be something that really starts coming in for you. This could be a massive shift or Kind of like a breaking point in some ways that you come to within yourself, within taking care of yourself, your body, 
you know, what needs to change in terms of those things, your identity, who you're being, who you're showing up as, right? It's like you're really, really getting a lot of uh, new shifts and breaking points in this area, you know, where, and also, like I said, your family, home, personal life, family dynamics, the past, you know, like things like that. This could be a massive time of like kind of letting go of the past and moving forward and realizing like that's not me anymore or uh i don't have to keep continuing to participate in these family dynamics or these old situations whatever it may be this may also be calling you to take the lead in something family or personal related and like really step up to the plate and get over certain old issues that you have in some way so let me know down below, Aries, if any of this rings true for you. If any of this resonates, I would really love to know. As always, check the description for more from me. If you didn't watch the beginning of this video, you definitely want to go watch that. You don't want to miss that as an Aries rising. You won't regret it. And we're going to move on to Taurus. Alrighty, Taurus, this Aries solar eclipse is happening in your 12th house. And so this is a very hidden subconscious house. You know, this is a place of really kind of going deep within seeing kind of behind the scenes stuff that you don't normally see it's really shedding a light and also signifying a major shift here in this area showing you certain habits or certain things that you hide or repress from yourself you know especially to do with masculinity especially to do with taking action asserting yourself you know making direct decisions being very direct with people about how you feel or what you want right kind of doing more things for you behind the scenes like maybe you know, getting away and doing something for you or, you know, doing different things that really feed your sense of individuality, you know? And so, you know, with you being a Taurus rising, this is like a, you know, your, your chart ruler is Venus. So it makes sense that Aries is your 12th house. It's like you are not as, you know, connected to this kind of energy. And so this is a time where this kind of energy is coming in. It could make you feel a little uncomfortable or it could remind you of parts of you that you've been ignoring or repressing or that have been suppressed in some way, you know, that certain healing aspects that need to be done or looked at where you haven't been quite speaking up or asserting yourself on a day-to-day -day basis with Mars in your third house, you know, squaring Chiron in your, you know, 12th house at the time of the solar eclipse, like where you're not being direct, where you're not like actually you know, taking action or standing by your morals or standing uh, in your heart in some way, following your heart in some way, going after what you really want on a heart level some way because maybe you feel not good enough or you feel like you can't or you feel incapable or you feel like you don't have the ability to in some way, right? And so this is a time that's going to really kind of show you kind of like the shadow side of this energy and what you've not been really embracing or expressing in your day-to-day -day life in some way. And it's also going to be squaring Pluto in your 10th house of career and authority figures and future long-term, you know, goals and ambitions and things like that. And so this could definitely be a time where there's kind of like a power struggle where there's a part of you that's kind of fed up, wants to get away or wants to kind of, you know, really focus on you or go like on like a soul journey to find yourself in some way or, you know, separate yourself in some way. But then there's also this power struggle or this maybe massive change that feels too big or too deep or scary in terms of your career, your long-term goals, your achievements, your future, you know, the, the legacy you want to leave behind or where you've been going in terms of your life. And so this could definitely bring up some power struggles here or some wounds in terms of speaking up, speaking your truth, uh, even your environment, your location. Uh, feeling kind of, you know, maybe out of terms with that. I could see a lot of you maybe contemplating moving or getting getting away or taking a short trip or, you know, something along those lines as well. Um, but this is definitely bringing in a very faded karmic and symbolic shift in terms of what needs to change, what needs to be healed, uh, what's been repressed, what's subconscious, what aspects of yourself have you not been embracing you know, what have you been putting off? What habits, you know, um, that need to be cleared away in terms of who you are or what feels, you know, aligned with you, you know? And so that is what I'm seeing for you, Taurus. Let me know down below if this resonated. I really, really 
love to hear your feedback and what you have to say about this as always make sure you go back and watch the first part of this video because you're missing out on a lot if you didn't you definitely don't want to miss that and i will see you guys in my next one bye gemini rising so this solar eclipse is actually in a very more positive spot for you than some of the other signs but this solar eclipse is a massive faded karmic new shift new beginning new energy coming in that can feel somewhat intense still but it's very much about your place in the world your place in the bigger picture how you connect with other people how you network with other people the friends and connections and acquaintances and alliances and collaborations that you have within your life where you fit in into the whole, your, you know, groups that you belong to, how to network, market, you know, things like this. And also this could bring in, uh, you know, a sense of your finances or your financial situation or your income or your priorities or, you know, your resources in some way with this as well. So as I said, as I've said before, I think in my April horoscope video, that I could definitely see you guys like really focusing on marketing or networking uh, as a means to finances or income or priorities, resources, etc. Things that support you, you know, trying to find a, a supportive way uh, in some way to, you know, connect with or reach out with other people or collaborate with other people, join different groups, join different alliances in some way. But this could be a really big shift coming in with that where, you know, you may be really focusing on that, but there could bring it could bring in some intensity or some insecurities okay in some way or you could be really focused on healing groups or um something like that you know and that could somehow tie into your finances or resources with mars squaring uh chiron in your 11th house you know and then we also are going to have this pluto square coming in in your ninth house of you know higher education learning travel you know, uh, different ideologies, you know, things like this belief systems. And so this could also bring in a very intense change that kind of shows you like, oh, wait, like, is this what I really want? Is this what I really desire? Maybe I need to go and change something or make a, a very big change in, you know, like what I am actually studying or what I'm actually educated in, or maybe I need to change my major, or maybe I need to go back to school, or maybe I need to take a new course in this, you know, you may start questioning yourself and your abilities and your skills a little bit with this solar eclipse potentially. And also with this solar eclipse though, you know, it could also just be as well that you start having some fears around, you know, world events or political events or uh, your educational pursuits or knowledge or something like that. That could also just be the case for some of you. Uh, but yeah, that is what I'm seeing for you, Gemini. Let me know down below how this relates to you, what parts relate to you, how you see this kind of playing into your life, because I really, really would love to hear your feedback on this and see how this is playing out for all of you that are Gemini Risings because it's very interesting and I'm, I'm honestly wondering. So uh, please let me know down below. And then also, if you didn't see the first part of this video, make sure to go back and watch that because you are missing out and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Alrighty, Cancer Rising. So this is a very life-changing new start for you that can feel very karmic, faded, or intense. And it may not all come up right at this eclipse, but over the next several months, you're really going to see this start taking effect. And, you know, you will start seeing some changes right around the eclipse or shortly after. But this is a very, very big eclipse for you because it is happening in your 10th house of your destiny, your path, like where you're going in life, your legacy, your career, right? Like this is literally the direction of your life. You know, this is literally like what you're building towards in terms of your life, what you, what goals you have and want to reach. And also on top of that, the ruler of this eclipse is in your first house. So this is also bringing in your own sense of identity and sense of self and body and all of that into this as well. And so it is really, really driving you towards something, you know, towards a certain direction in your life is kind of how I see this. But I think the issue here is going to be Mars and your sign squaring Chiron in your 10th. And so this is going to bring up certain insecurities, certain wounds that you have around masculinity and about going after what you want in the world, going after the career you want or going after the, the direction that you want, the goals that you want, the achievements that you want, achieving certain things, initiating certain things. And so this could be a time where you start feeling a little bit overprotective or defensive or whatever of yourself and your identity, or it starts to cause certain challenges in terms of 
how you initiate, how you take action. You know, certain insecurities could come up, but I want you to know that you will overcome these. But this is for you to work through. This is for you to challenge yourself to work through some of these insecurities in terms of reaching your goals, reaching your potential, reaching the, the, the actual, you know, achievements and future and visions that you want for yourself in your life. Now, this solar eclipse is really bringing in a faded sense of like what you're destined to do, what you're destined, like a destined shift in terms of your direction in life, in terms of, you know, who you want to be in your life, where you want to go in your life, the things that you want to accomplish in your life. But it's also bringing in an intense challenge in terms of, you know, money, finances, other people's money, other people's finances, and potentially some power dynamics there that you could also definitely see over the following weeks or months with it squaring Pluto in your eighth. And maybe even subconscious things or deeper, more intimate subjects that get kind of brought up in this solar eclipse somehow or over the next several months. Because like I said, this is a solar eclipse that is very symbolic. So it's not just about right now or the next couple of weeks. This is about the next several months and even the next year and a half, right? So this is starting a, a major cycle and giving us a glimpse into what's coming, okay? And it's going to be very intense because it's at the 29th degree of Aries in your 10th house. So it's like, you're really getting this like massive full circle lesson, but also like new beginning. It's kind of like the world card for you is how I kind of feel like. And it's really going to challenge what you think you know, or what you think you can do. And it's going to push you though, to really overcome those limiting beliefs or limiting, you know, insecurities that are holding you back from taking action on the things that you actually desire, you know, like from actually going after your full potential, right? And so that is what I'm seeing for you, Cancer Risings, for this solar eclipse. Let me know down below if that relates, if that lands with you. I would really, really love to hear your feedback and know what's coming up for you around this time. I really, really would be interested to know. I'm not just saying that. And uh, yeah, if you didn't miss the beginning of this video, definitely go back and watch that. It can give you a lot more insight. You don't want to miss that. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye. Alrighty, my fellow Leo Risings, let's get into what the solar eclipse is bringing for us. So this solar eclipse is a very intense and massive turning point and shift for everybody. But for us, it is a very massive turning point and shift in terms of what we feel is our purpose. What gives us a sense of purpose? What gives us a sense of faith? What gives us a sense of meaning in life? right? And where we find that meaning. And to find that meaning, we've been really kind of being pulled in opposite directions. We've been being pulled back. We've been, you know, kind of pulled into this retreating energy lately with Mars in our 12th. And it's trying to show us that the answers are within, that they're within our hearts, that they are, you know, within our, our connection to something deeper, something more spiritual, right? And so it's been showing us that, you know, they are within the purification of certain bad habits, certain old routines, certain old cycles or patterns that need to end. And so the solar eclipse could really emphasize that even more because it's in our ninth house, but it's also connected to our 12th house with Mars in our 12th. And so it's bringing up a sense of like deep, deep study and purification in terms of our faith, in terms of where we find purpose, where we find meaning. And it's calling us to go within. It's calling us to take a step back. It's calling us to like, you know, start studying again, become a student again, right? And to be more authentic about that, right? To be more of who we are, you know, in the world and with other people. And to even maybe find people that we relate with, like that's fine, or find a mentor, or find a teacher that we relate with um, that can help us on this journey. That is also fine. But it's really taking us inward and it's showing us what we still need to learn, what we still need to educate ourselves on, what we still need to unravel. This could be a massive shift in terms of if you are looking to educate yourself on something more, take a course, go back to school, you know, figure out what it is that gives you that sense of meaning, adventure, purpose, like, you know, sense of self in your life uh, that maybe hasn't felt quite all the way uh, write or study for a while, but it's also showing us where we have certain wounds or insecurities and in going after what we want in life, going and getting out of our comfort zone, you know, getting out of, uh, the normal 
things that we're used to in our day-to-day -day environment, right? It's showing us where we have certain insecurities to go learn more or do more or travel more or see new perspectives more, right? And so that could also be something that comes up where, you know, we start kind of feeling like wounded or insecure in terms of, you know, and, and, and like hiding that in some way. Um, and where we are kind of pushed to be more vulnerable or work through that. And so that is something that I really feel like is coming up here for Leo Risings with the solar eclipse. Now, it's also going to be squaring Pluto in our seventh house of relationships. And so this could also bring up certain changes or power dynamics in terms of other people in our lives, relationships in our lives, um, our partner could be going through a, a more darker or difficult or intense situation or a power struggle in terms of, you know, where they feel they are going or um, what they feel is purposeful for them. You know, something like that. Uh, we could also feel like, you know, maybe some of you kind of get this urge to travel, but your partner can't or Maybe they're, you're going through like a long distance relationship type of like situation that's like starting this new shift. Or maybe, you know, you, you realize that to really kind of get to where you want to go in life, you have to learn more or you have to develop new lessons. And somehow that is in some kind of intense conflict or feels, uh, you know, in this kind of deep you know, challenge with your relationships in some way or with other people in your life in some way. And so that is what I'm seeing for us. I really feel like this is like a lot of high priestess and hierophant energy for Leo Risings, if you know what I mean, in the tarot. This is a lot of going within, getting away. Um, you know, Mars in our 12th is a time where we're not going to have the same amount of energy as we normally do. And we have to be very uh, discerning with our energy and, yeah, and our energy has to have a purpose. It has to have a meaning. It has to feel like we're we're achieving some kind of higher meaning. And it's not just wasted on something that doesn't even matter, you know. And so we could definitely be taking courses, learning pursuits, you know, classes, things like that during this time. But it's it's also this kind of intense buildup that's like, okay, this is what where we need to funnel our energy into. And it's also going to show us certain insecurities that we have within our energy and within taking action or being direct about what we really desire or want. So let me know down below, Leo Risings, if that resonates with you. I'd really, really love to hear your feedback as a fellow Leo Rising. <laughs> Let's compare notes. So let me know down below. And if you missed the beginning of this video, you are definitely missing out. Make sure to go back and watch that. I love you and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Alrighty, Virgo Rising. So for this solar eclipse coming in Aries on April 19th, I really, really see that this is a time that is going to bring up a lot in terms of potentially some intense power struggles or intense changes, uh, control issues, things like that in terms of your work, your day-to-day -day routines, your health, but also some really kind of like fed up breakthrough moments in terms of your finances, right? The solar eclipse is happening in your eighth house of your finances, your investments, your shared resources, uh, other people's money, business, you know, things like this could really, really come up. Intense, more occult uh, topics that, you know, are situations that are a little bit more out of your control, inheritance, things like that. This is going to be a really big karmic and kind of faded new shift coming in in this area that's really pushing you towards the edge of what you may have thought was possible before. And so this could definitely be a time where you are being pulled to take more independence, take more action, to initiate more, to, to assert yourself more in terms of finances because of some, you know, extreme or big changes or intense changes or challenges or struggles going on in the workplace, you know. And uh, this could also have to do somehow with other people, friend groups, communities, you know, acquaintances, collaborations, different, you know, groups that you belong to that share the same interest in some way with Mars in your 11th house, um, you know, funds uh, with other people, charities, things like that. So how could have to do with this and you kind of facing some, you know, insecurities or old wounds 
you know, to deal with maybe asking for help or relying on other people or something like that could also come in at this time. You know, you're being really, really pushed here to your limit or to a certain point where you are just kind of fed up and really wanting to have control over your own resources and finances or business or investments or you know whatever or you know finally pay off that debt or take that action in terms of like building wealth or you know building something more you know in alignment with who you are and uh this is gonna uh, a solar eclipse that's really gonna highlight that and shift that it could bring in some pretty deep transformational changes you know even if it's not right on the 19th in the following days and weeks and the next six months you could really see a lot of big transformations in this area of your life and so definitely watch out for that that is what i'm seeing for you virgo let me know down below if this sounds true if this rings a bell if any of this resonates i really really love to hear your feedback and how this is happening for you i'm not just saying that either like i i really want to know like what's happening for you as a virgo rising with all of this and how this is playing out for you thank you guys so so much if you missed the first part of this video make sure to go back and watch it and i will see you guys in the next one bye Alrighty, libra this solar eclipse in aries is a big one for you if you are a libra rising this is happening in your seventh house of relationships marriage your commitments with other people, really close connections and people that you have in your life, business partnerships, etc. So this is a, an eclipse that is bringing in a lot of faded karmic change that needs to happen. It's like it's reached its boiling point. It's a new beginning, but it's also potentially an intense or frustrating energy that comes in. It's like, I am fed up with this. Like, and it's really pushing you to embrace your individuality, embrace your sense of, you know, self in this connection or situation or relationship or with other people in some way, right? Or you could be seeing this play out in your partner. They could be going through a big shift. They could be going through a massive shift with this solar eclipse. And I feel like whatever it is, whether it's you or them, it's going to deal a lot with your future. It's going to deal a lot with the future of the situation, the goals of the situation, career, where you're going, the path that you're on, your vision for the future, what you want for the future, what you're working towards, right? Uh, because Mars is in your 10th house and that's the ruler of this solar eclipse happening in your seventh and it's going to be squaring Chiron in your seventh. And so this could bring up some wounds, some insecurities or some difficulties or challenges in terms of your relationships with other people versus the future, your goals, your achievements, your career, where you're headed in life, what you really want to achieve, or focus on or put your energy into in terms of you know your visions your achievements etc now this solar eclipse is also going to be squaring pluto in your fifth house of love romance dating so this definitely is bringing in this like kind of intense power dynamic in terms of you know a, a certain relationship that you have versus you know maybe something that you want that's a little bit more um you know, on your terms, or that's maybe even a little bit more detached, or that deals with sexuality, or other people, or kids in some way, with Pluto and Aquarius in your fifth house, or, um, you know, the way that you want to be loved, or what you are actually attracted to, or something like that could definitely come in with this solar eclipse. It's definitely like, you know, bringing in a very powerful change. It's kind of like an ending, but it's also this powerful new beginning a change that needs to happen in terms of your love life and your relationships and what you really truly desire and want. And if that's really in alignment with what you want, where you're going, your future, um, or theirs, you know, like I said, it could be the other person too. It could be another person in your life, a close relationship, uh, your husband, wife, marriage partner, significant other, whatever. Um, it could be happening in their life, uh, by, you know, it could be vice versa. So with it being in the seventh house. So that is what I'm seeing here for you, Libra. Definitely let me know down below if any of that rings true or seems to resonate for you. I would really, really be interested to hear in your feedback and what's happening for you. I'm not just saying that either. I truly, truly am interested to hear what you guys have going on with this solar eclipse. Thank you so much for watching. If you didn't see the beginning of this video, make sure to go do that because you're missing out on a lot. And I will see you guys in my next one. Alrighty, Scorpio Risings, this solar eclipse is a big faded karmic change for you, a big breaking point for you, empowering moment for you of really feeling like it's time to overcome something, some kind of challenge, some kind of struggle 
in terms of your work life or your health, right? This is a time of like, you know, really getting clear on who you are and what you want and what's good for you in terms of these areas of life, work and health, basically, your day-to-day tasks, your routines, your habits, right? Like what needs to be overcome here? This could be, you know, you finally getting back into fitness or going back to the gym or feeling fed up at a job that you're at, whatever the case may be. But I feel like it's also really pointing out certain values, belief systems, ideologies that you have that maybe uh, you haven't been embracing or, you know, things that you've certain, like certain directions or, <clears throat> you know, paths that you've wanted to take that aren't in alignment somehow because Mars is in your ninth house and it's going to be squaring Chiron in your sixth house. And so this tells me that there could be some insecurities around certain beliefs or ideologies that are kind of conflicting with your work, but maybe you haven't said anything or maybe you've been holding it in. Um, you know, maybe there's something else that you've wanted to go to school for, but you felt like, oh, who am I to do that? Or there's been some kind of insecurity around it or some kind of wound around it that really needs to be addressed, faced and healed. And that is what this eclipse is going to really, really highlight as you're kind of getting to the end of your rope with something here. Uh, so you can start this new, really faded, intense and karmic new beginning in terms of what you really want to do and what's really good for you in your day to day life, like what you can really put your energy towards that feels right for you and correct for you. Right. But there may be some fears because of the past or because of family or home life or personal life or, you know, family dynamics or something like power struggles or control issues or, you know, just deep personal issues that could be going on kind of in your private or personal life with the solar eclipse squaring Pluto in your fourth house now. And so this is really bringing in this kind of like new era of change that needs to happen for you to embrace this new era of your life, for you to really step into your power and step into what you want. But there are certain changes that need to happen. Uh, there are certain insecurities that need to be faced and healed. There are certain things that need to be overcome for you to be able to really step into this, right? So that is what I'm seeing for you, Scorpio. Let me know down below if this resonates. I really, really would love to hear what's happening for you guys uh, around this solar eclipse. So definitely check back in. Let me know what's going on. I'm really, truly interested to hear. And if you missed the first part of this video, make sure to go back and watch that because you're missing out on a lot. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this and I will see you guys in the next one. Alrighty, Sagittarius, the solar eclipse is happening in your fifth house of fun, love, romance, sexuality, dating, pleasure, the things that really bring you joy and entertainment in life. So this is definitely a solar eclipse that is really showing you a lot about what your heart desires, what you're passionate about, what you really want for you and no one else. Like what is really, truly good for you and what is really going to make you happy in the long run, right? And so, but it's kind of tying in your eighth house because Mars is the ruler of the solar eclipse and it's in your eighth house in Cancer. And so this is also bringing in a sense of finance, investment, you know, debt, things like that, resources and shared money and finances. And so this could have something to do with child support for a lot of you. This could have something to do with, um, you know, kind of dependency on other finances or resources with other people, investments with other people. Um, you know, taking action or asserting yourself in some of these situations or financial situations that you may have with other people and how that affects, you know, your children or your joy or your dating life or the passions that you have, you know, making investments towards some of these passions that you have or, uh, you know, a business and the passion that you have for that business or something like that. You know, Mars is going to be squaring Chiron in your fifth house from your eighth house. And so this could bring, be bringing up some insecurities here as well with these two areas of life, you know, some healing that needs to be done or some challenges that need to be faced, you know, with your inner child and facing some of these financial situations or challenges that you might have and insecurities that you may have had with facing some of these things or taking action on some of these things or protecting yourself with some of these things as well. Now, this is also going to be, the solar eclipse is also going to be squaring Pluto in your third house, which really I kind of interpret as, you know, a powerful change in terms of maybe your environment or speaking up for yourself or the types of environments or people that you interact with or the town or city that you live in uh, to get even more kind of, you know, general there. But uh, yeah, so I, I do feel like this could be maybe a change in your environment or 
uh, the start of a change in your environment or the start of a change in your day-to-day -day life or routines in some way, the situations, people, places, and things that you interact with. Uh, so it could be bringing in that kind of two here. So let me know down below though, Sage, what is going on, if any of that is accurate or true for you at the moment and what does happen for you, I'd really, really, truly appreciate it. Do remember this is gonna be rippling through the next six months. So this is not like a one and done thing. And uh, yeah, if you missed the first part of this video, definitely go back and watch that. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Alrighty, Capricorn Risings. This solar eclipse is such a big deal for you because you are a fellow cardinal sign. So this <laughs> solar eclipse is happening in your fourth house of your private life, your home, your family, your foundation, you know, your roots, your past, you know, what's going on in your private life, your personal life, what's personal to you. What things, you know, would you rather kind of keep behind the scenes or family dynamics, things going on with your living situation in your home, you know, things like that. And so this solar eclipse can really be a very faded and karmic change here with things that are going on in your personal life and showing you where you may need to kind of step up or initiate your, yourself more or, you know, face certain conflicts or where you've been fed up or had enough or certain breakthroughs are like really faded karmic intense changes that could start happening here or showing you something about this area of life. This could also be, you know, showing you something, you know, just bringing up certain things that it's showing you. Now, this could also, though, tie in your relationships with other people with somehow with Mars in your seventh house squaring Chiron in your third house at the time of this eclipse and Mars also being the ruler of this eclipse. And so this is also going to somehow play out in your relationships with other people, your connections with those other people and certain insecurities that you may have in terms of your personal life, your private life, your past, your home, your family, things that have happened before that have really wounded you and are playing a big part in how you're acting uh, in your relationships or maybe even some mirroring that's going on in your relationship with other people or something that they're maybe dealing with that somehow is impacting you on a personal level because of your past or your insecurities or, you know, things like that. And so that could also be a massive turning point of you needing to work through some of these old wounds or some of these old insecurities of your past or with your family or with your childhood or with your roots, you know, or with your personal life or with something going on behind the scenes in your private life that is a little bit more private and that you may not want to just share with everybody, right? Like, so um, it's you kind of working through some of these things and kind of seeing a glimpse to the other side, right? Now, the solar eclipse is also squaring Pluto in your second house. So this could also bring in uh, a theme of finances, money, priorities, income, resources, you know, support, things like that. So this could also be kind of, you know, a massive change coming or that's going to start <laughs> that may not all happen right on the 19th, but, you know, in the weeks following or in the months following, you may start seeing these things where there's like a massive shift in what you desire or what you really want or what really feels good for you in terms of your home life or in terms of family or in terms of how you want to live, what your foundation is. But that could be putting some pressure or some intense fear on your finances. You know, um, it could bring up some intense fears or control issues or, you know, secrets in terms of money, finances, assets, you know, resources, things like that. So uh, power struggles in that area as well. So this is kind of just like a, a really intense, faded, karmic new beginning and glimpse and sign into uh, what needs to be worked through and healed and what's coming, right? And so definitely let me know down below though, Capricorn, if you're noticing any of this stuff coming up for this solar eclipse, what you are noticing coming up, I really, really, truly love to hear what you guys are noticing and what's coming up for you. I'm very, very interested to know. If you haven't watched the first part of this video, definitely make sure to go do that. And I will see you guys in the next one. Alrighty, Aquarius rising. This solar eclipse is in a pretty decent spot for you. Honestly, it's in your third house. This is not going to be probably, I mean, it may still be intense, but it's not going to be as intense as it is for a lot of the other signs for you. Uh, the solar eclipse in your third house. So it's bringing in like a massive focus shift, karmic or faded change in terms of your environments, in terms of your day-to-day -day surroundings, what you do or interact with or who you interact with on a day-to-day -day basis or where you need to assert yourself more, speak your opinions more, speak up for yourself more, express yourself more, 
But with Mars, the ruler of the solar eclipse in your sixth house and squaring Chiron in your third house at the time of the solar eclipse, this could bring in uh, a pretty intense change or, you know, some pretty intense struggles or challenges that you're starting to overcome in terms of your work, your day-to-day -day health and your routines, okay? Uh, where you may not feel as connected or as valued or as, you know, supported in your work environment or with your day-to-day -day job, with the day-to-day -day maintenance and task and health that you're doing in some way, your habits, you know, and where you have certain insecurities about asserting yourself or about speaking up, and that could really come up, especially in terms of the workplace or with health-related things, you know, things like that, certain insecurities with these things could start coming up around the time of this eclipse and in like the week following or weeks following. And so definitely make sure you're on the lookout for that. And then on the solar eclipse as well, the solar eclipse will be squaring Pluto that just recently moved into your sign. And so this could definitely be an intensity that you're feeling to make some really deep and profound changes in who you are, who you're interacting with, where you're interacting, how you're interacting, the location or the environment that you're interacting in. I could see a lot of uh, Aquarius risings deciding to move locations or take a short trip or get away or, um, you know, really put themselves in new environments around this time with different people, different places, things like that could really, really start happening around this time. You may feel some power struggles in terms of really expressing yourself in some way in the location or in the environment that you're in or the people, places, and things that you're around on a day-to-day -day basis. And so this could be, uh, you know, something that is really coming up for you with this solar eclipse Aquarius. So let me know down below if that resonates and what you do see coming up. I'd really, really love to hear your stories, your feedback on what's going on with this solar eclipse for you, Aquarius. I'm very, very intrigued and interested and curious to know. So let me know down below. And if you didn't see the first part of this video, make sure to go back and watch that because you're missing out on a lot. It gives a lot more context and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Alrighty, Pisces, last but not least, baby. <laughs> so the solar eclipse for you is happening in your second house of your priorities, your resources, your finances, your income, you know, that which supports you as an individual in your life, that which you need, right? Your assets, things like this, things that you own, right? And so it's going to be a massive spotlight on this and also where you are maybe at this kind of you know, boiling point are kind of fed up or ready to make a big shift in this area, an intense big shift in this area, because maybe it's been affecting you subconsciously, or maybe it's been bringing out scarcity or fears or survival things subconsciously within you. And so you really want to make a change. You really want to make, you know, take decisive action and make a change in terms of your independence in this area, especially financially and, you know, with resources and things like that. And so um, this also could be bringing in as well an element of like, what are you passionate about? What do you love? What's close to your heart? But also children, dating and romance as well with Mars in your fifth house, which is the ruler of this eclipse. And so this could be bringing up certain insecurities or old wounds that you have with being able to support yourself, but also maybe children or also maybe doing what you love or taking action on the things that your heart feels connected to or you know, dating or romance or sexuality in some way as well, you know, like you're really seeing like, oh, okay, like this is what I have to offer. Um, or you're feeling insecure about what you have to offer and you're scared to like really take action and initiate on certain things because you feel like maybe I'm not worth it or maybe I don't have much to offer, you know, because you've been in this lack or scarcity mindset about something. And so I feel like this eclipse is kind of like a boiling point, like a I'm fed up with this. Like, I'm ready to move forward. Like, I don't give a fuck anymore. Like, you know, and it's, it could definitely be triggering some subconscious wounds and some subconscious fears and some intensity in you. But it's like you need this, like, intensity and breakthrough to create this change in what it is that you really want to do for yourself and, and really stepping into your masculinity, you know, of taking action on the things that you love and taking action on the things that you feel connected to on a heart level, you know, and that you feel fired up about. And so that is what I'm really seeing for you for this Eclipse Pisces. Let me know down below if this resonates at all. I'd really, really love to hear your feedback and um, even what is coming up for you for this uh, solar eclipse. I'd be really curious to know what you do 
find what themes you do find coming up for you as a Pisces rising for the solar eclipse. If you missed the beginning of this video, definitely go back and watch that because you're missing out. Thank you guys so, so much for being here and I will see you guys in my next one.